your Bibles to the book of James, chapter 3, please. And uh, while you're doing that, I'd like to thank Pastor for allowing me to speak to you guys tonight. James, chapter 3. If you're taking notes, the title of my message will be called The Power of the Tongue. And um, starting in verse 5, it says, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on, and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of bird, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith, God, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we man, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things not ought, these things ought not so to be. So my first point. So my first point is the tongue is a tool. Usually, if you uh, think of a tool, you'd associate it with building or construction or like bringing stuff together to build one big object. But it uh, can also tear something apart. If you, I remember um, the car. We one of our cars. The alternator went out. And me and my dad went out there, and we had to completely go through almost like half the engine to just get this one piece out. And we had to unscrew the bolts and the, um, the screws and everything, and then we finally got it out, and we had to put it back in. So if you look in Genesis chapter 3, in <coughs> Genesis chapter 3, in verse number 4, this is the chapter of when... Um, uh, Eve ate of the fruit of the garden of the tree of life, of the tree of no knowledge of good and evil, and then gave it to Adam, and because of that, sin nature was entered into our human, our human form. And in verse four it said, "And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil." And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes of the Pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Satan used his wording as a tool to deceive um, Eve into eating the fruit, and with that, she gave it also to Adam. And because he disobeyed God, sin sin was um, brought into humanity. And if you look in verse twenty three. Down through 24, it says, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Because of our sin and what Eve and Adam did, um, the fellowship between God and man was tore apart and broken, all because Satan used his words to deceive Eve, and he lied to her. But he also, the thing that Satan does good is he takes a little bit of a lie and throws in there a truth, throws in like, and puts a bunch of truth around it. Because he said back in verse 4, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. He wasn't talking about you. God wasn't talking about when he told Adam. He wasn't saying, You're going you're gonna to die physically. I believe he was talking about it spiritually. So then when um, Adam disobeyed God, his spirit died, which is what happens when we get saved and the Holy Spirit comes in our lives and quickens us. And that brings the fellowship back with um, God, between man and God. And if you look in Matthew chapter 27, um, this is when Jesus was crucified on the cross and when he died for our sins. In verse, starting in verse 46, It says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sambachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood, when they heard that, said, This man called for lies. And straightway went up one, one of them ran, and took a sponge, and filled it with a vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave, it, gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. And Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. From the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks went rent. Here, um, before this, Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, It is finished, which um, finalized that basically saying to us that the blood offering that he came down to give 
God accepted it. And with that, he took, um, God took all, Jesus took all the sin on, um, on him from us. And because of what he said, the communion between God and man was restored again. And in verse 51, it says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks went. In the temple, there was a, there was like two little rooms with the one had the Ark of the Covenant, and the other room was where the priest would go to get ready to go before the Ark of the Covenant. And only the priest was able to go um, into those two rooms. And, um, and when, the, rent, when the, um, the veil was rent in twain, it symbolized how we don't need somebody to go to God for us. We can just go straight to God without having to need somebody like that. My second point is the tongue is a weapon. Usually you'd, a weapon you could use to kill somebody, like in war, you got guns which can shoot people, swords which can cut somebody's head off and kill them. But, <laughs> but you can also, but if somebody's slashing, slashing their sword at you, you can also use your sword to protect yourself. If you turn with me to Esther chapter 3, <coughs> Esther chapter 3, verse 8. It says, And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's law, therefore it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hand of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasury. Haman used his words to convince the king to make a law that gives him permission to um, form a group of people to go out and kill the Jews. At this time, the king of Persia came and conquered the Jews and brought them back to Persia. And um, back then, the law of the Persians, once the law was made, it can't be taken back, but you can make a law that goes over that. So I th Haman used that as um, to his advantage to be able to wipe out the Jews once and for all. But if you look over in chapter 7, in verse 2, it, this is when um, Esther made the banquet to, for the king and Haman. And the king said, And the king said unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom. And Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. Though we have been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the m enemy could not countervail the king's damage. And the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, and where is he, that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, the, adverse, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. When Haman was afraid before the king and the queen, then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And if you look down in chapter, or verse seven, oh, sorry, verse 10, it says, So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Esther came, had a banquet for the king to ask him to make a law that would give her people permission and allow them to defend themselves against the law that Haman had. And um, because of that, because she had the boldness to come before the king, she was able to save her people and save a lot of people from dying in the, um, the kingdom of Persia. And I want to talk to you tonight, and how will you use your tongue? You can only use your tongue in two ways. You can either tear somebody down and make them go through something very hard in your life, or you can build them up and encourage them through something that they're going through very hard in their life. Or you could, or you can go out and witness to people and just not say anything and let them die in um, a place where they're burning forever. Or you can give them the gospel and, it's, and they can be saved and go to heaven. I want to challenge you tonight. I want you possibly every day this week either to try to encourage somebody or give somebody the gospel that you either haven't met before or at your workplace or somewhere and just try to encourage them and help them, tell you, tell them where you go to church, invite them to church, ask them if they know uh, Jesus and just 
See, you, you, can, you can do more things than you know when it's just telling somebody something.